Finally tonight, former U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte's running for governor of New Hampshire. But when she recently kicked off her campaign on Fox News, she turned her focus to this state. We are one election away from becoming Massachusetts and New Hampshire, and I'm not going to let that happen. Here in New Hampshire, we take our, our state motto very seriously, live free or die. And there's just a very different perspective with our neighbors. Ayotte hey, isn't the first Republican to use Massachusetts as a foil, but in a wide open race in what's still very much a swing state, will the strategy work? I'm joined now by Lila Alphonse, editor of Boston Globe, New Hampshire, and by the former chair of the New Hampshire Republican Party and a co-founder of the Lincoln Project, Jennifer Horn. She is now the host of the podcast, Is It Just Me or Have We All Lost Our Minds? Terrific name, Jennifer, and thank you both for being here. Jennifer, were you surprised as someone who uh, is very much rooted in the New Hampshire GOP milieu, were you surprised to see Ayotte hit this point as hard as she did as she kicked off her campaign? Well, first, thank you for having me. I enjoy being part of the conversation. And no, I'm not at all surprised. Um, you know, it's been a very effective talking point, a very effective message for Republicans in New Hampshire for decades now. You know, we're very proud of the fact that you know, New Hampshire is tax free. It's no state income tax, no state sales tax. Uh, Massachusetts Democrat majority, you know, maintained in in the Massachusetts State House. There are a lot of um, a lot of easy targets uh, when it comes to messaging. If you want to and to compare Massachusetts and New Hampshire, and with New Hampshire acting as something of a bedroom community uh, for Massachusetts, it's frequently part of the political conversation. Lila, what is your take from your vantage point? Is this smart politics? Um, I think it's probably far easier to focus on Massachusetts than to focus on her opponents in the primary. She's one of several um, conservative contenders who have either declared or who are expected to declare. Um, I wouldn't call New Hampshire completely tax-free. It has some of the highest property taxes in the country, which corresponds to some of the lowest home ownership rates. Um, and if you are one of the many thousands of people who live in New Hampshire but work in Massachusetts, you're still paying income tax to Massachusetts. So regardless of who's in the governor's seat up in New Hampshire. So I'm not really surprised. I'm interested in seeing, though, how it shakes out. We're 58 weeks away from the primary. It's really early yet. When you say you're interested in seeing mm -hmm. how it shakes out, mm -hmm. do you mean you're interested in seeing if she just hews to this particular attack line again and again and again and if it works for her? I am, and I'm also interested in seeing who her eventual opponents are and whether they start attacking Massachusetts, each other, or looking to present solutions for problems that are happening in New Hampshire. Jennifer, Lila mentioned uh, Ayotte's opponents on the Republican side. Can you offer just a quick pr uh, preview or synopsis of the race and who she's running against to become the Republican nominee? Well, I, you know, first of all, I think that you're going to hear a lot of um, problem solving from Senator Ayotte and likely from the other candidates as well. Uh, nobody's going to run this race entirely, you know, against Massachusetts, but it is a very effective um, messaging point for candidates in the Republican Party in New Hampshire. Um, and, you know, if um, Frank Adelblut, the former, um, uh, the for, or actually he's not former, I guess, um, uh, director of the Department of Education, in New Hampshire has a very strong conservative base there. He, you know, the, the most conservative Republicans are very, um, uh, very supportive of Frank and, and his previous run for governor several years ago when he ran against Chris Sununu. Um, and then I think that um, uh, Chuck Morris if, if I, uh, isn't going to be in this race. Former Chuck Senate is leader, the one, right? Yeah. That's right. Form, he's a former Senate leader, and Chuck is going to be a formidable opponent for Senator Ayotte. He has, um, you know, been the guy who has been responsible for building some really strong budgets. He gets credit for balancing the budget in New Hampshire in, the, uh, in his role as the uh, in the Senate. And again, he's somebody who has a lot of support um, in the Republican base uh, because of the role that he's played. And part of the genius, maybe, of what Ayad is doing, I don't know if genius is too strong a word, is by, by floating this attack line, mm -hmm. not floating it, leading with it, 
putting it out there on Fox, getting Massachusetts politicians to push back, getting mm -hmm. our friend John Keller mm -hmm. from CBS Boston to push back, and getting in a spat with him on social media. Uh, Kelly Ayotte's not talking about her Republican opponents. She's right, and I think I think that that's exactly why it's it's been so successful for her to lead with this. Um, she hasn't really floated anything that separates her from these conservative Republicans who she'll be running against and, in the primary. And one thing, tell me if I'm right here, too, one thing she is not doing now is answering questions about former President Trump and correct. whether she has been sufficiently supportive of him. Is that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Lila, I think both of you were going to oh, We're both nodding our heads. Yeah, Jennifer, you go first, <laughs> and then we'll hear from Lila. Is well, that, no, is that, that an is, advantage? <clears throat> that, is a correct, that is correct. And the less time that any of the candidates can spend talking about Donald Trump, the better off for them in this race. Um, you know, uh, Donald Trump uh, is um, much beloved, I would say, by much of the Republicans and by many of the Republicans in New Hampshire. But um, being a pro-Trump candidate is not a good place to be in a general election in New Hampshire at all. Um, I think Donald Trump is going to be a stumbling block, frankly, for all three of these candidates. Um, it's very difficult to um, express any sort of support for him and think you're going to be able to build a strong general election campaign. Mm -hmm. Lyle, what were you going to say? Um, I think that's right. And I think Ayotte um, has some firsthand experience there. She endorsed Trump. And then she pulled back her endorsement after the Access Hollywood tape where he gloated about groping women came out. And then during a debate, I believe she said he was a good role model, right. immediately walked that back. So she has some experience with the contortions that are needed um, in order to kind of strike that balance between showing enough support to get support from his base and showing enough distance to perhaps get supports from the moderates and and uh, libertarians who she's going to need to get through this. And now she's alighted it. I want to roll just briefly some mm -hmm. footage. We went up to Milford, which is a fairly mm -hmm. evenly split town politically, uh, to get a sense of whether this is going to resonate with a small subsection of New Hampshire voters. Here's some of what people said to us when we asked if they were worried that New Hampshire was about mm -hmm. to become Massachusetts. New Hampshire used to be one way, and now you're just starting to see it out over the border towns are just creeping in. Um, going towards the Massachusetts way. There's a lot of people up here that their gun laws are what they want. They, that's why they came here. And the Massachusetts laws are totally, you know, different. And can't have this, can't have that. The crime rate in Manchester hovers around being the same as Lawrence Lowell. You didn't see that, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Really quickly before we go, I want to bring up the issue of crime. Uh, Ayotte said that there is fentanyl being trafficked in New Hampshire from cities like Lawrence and Lowell. Again, our friend, mutual friend, Lila John Keller, mm -hmm. said that that was a dog whistle, and that was what precipitated Ayotte's spat with him. I'd like to hear from each of you. Lila first, and then last word you, Jennifer. Do you think this is risky territory for Ayat as she presses this point? Um, I think it is. It's kind of being presented without evidence, which is always a big red flag for me. Um, fentanyl, opioids, they're a problem everywhere. I would not say that they're a problem in New Hampshire because of Massachusetts. But um, the dog whistle thing, I think that's tough also. I can see why a lot of people felt that way about it. Uh, Jennifer, you got the last word here. Well, I, I would say that, um, you know, to her point, it, the fentanyl abuse is everywhere. Um, and so I, I'm not sure about uh, calling this a dog whistle. Um, but I would say that this is an issue that Governor uh, Sununu, uh, you know, uh, talked about in the same parameters that Senator Ayotte did. Um, and it's an issue that the state has been fighting for a very long time just like Massachusetts has. Um, and, and I hope that's one of those areas where there's going to be a lot of conversation about solutions and maybe less conversation about who started it. Yeah, that seems yeah. like it would be good. I should note, in that Twitter back and forth that I mentioned a moment ago, AOP provided a bunch of examples of right. stories of people from Massachusetts being arrested as they sought to distribute fentanyl mm -hmm. in New Hampshire. Lila Alphonse, Jennifer Horn, thank you both. Thank you.